What's up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual and welcome to a very special episode of The Casual, the 200K Q&A, where we ask you guys on the YouTube community page to present any of the questions that you wanted to ask me personally, Reggie Casual, because I don't talk about myself for good reason. I'm just not that interesting. Nah, I'm just joking. But maybe I am, maybe I'm not, I don't know. It uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, we asked you guys to ask some questions. We're gonna choose five or maybe six, I'm not sure, right? Choose five of these, six of these. We're gonna answer them straight up. However, before we get into all that, I wanna give a big shout out to everybody who's decided to be a part of the Casual family, the community. You guys are awesome, you guys are great. You guys would keep this keep this thing going, you keep the top, you keep the clock ticking, right? And I love you guys for that. Big shout out to the team, the casual team, new and old alike. Uh, big shout out to the patrons and, and members uh, who decided to take the extra step in making sure that the casual can keep its lights on. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we're gonna definitely be doing more stuff for you guys uh, and being more consistent with content on Patreon and on uh, YouTube membership. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this. We're gonna go right into the questions. I don't talk about myself, like I said, but today you get to ask the questions and find out. Let's get it. All right, so first question comes from the homie Santiago Sanchez. Where does your knowledge about starting and developing a fashion business come from? A lot of people ask this question. They're like, did you ever start a brand, Reggie? How do you have the authority to talk about these things? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, let's just call out the elephant in the room. Have I ever started a brand and did it fail? Yes, I started a brand. No, it did not fail. I just stopped doing it. Not because we weren't selling, because we were about to sell a lot. Not because we didn't have buyers, because we have buyers and not because it sucked, because it was actually, it was okay, but it wasn't okay enough for me. A lot of people may see me as like a streetwear guy because we talk about streetwear quite a bit. A lot of the people that I venerate in fashion are the technical designers, the what luxury designers. People like Yoji Yamamoto, Rei Kawakubo, Jun Takase, Jenya Watanabe, Hader Ackerman, Takahiro Miyashita. These are the, uh, Chitose Abe. These are the individuals that I love as a designer. And when I was developing my brand, I developed it as a street brand. And the only reason why I did that is because I knew how to operate. Now, a little bit about my background. I did work as a consultant for brands before I even started a brand. So I worked in the corporate office of a company in Los Angeles in their lifestyle department. I was creating assets, doing brand building, doing marketing, all of that. So I do have professional experience, years of professional experience. Uh, I studied design in school, but I also went to a lot of trades. I went to the sewing trade. I went to a screen printing trade. Uh, I even went to a leather working trade. So I don't know everything, but I know a lot of angles of the industry. I also did some internships as well and just studied under uh, some people who are in the industry. So when I, before I even started the brand, I went at it in a marketing perspective. I went at it the marketing way. I was like, okay, evoke an emotional response, do something that people are familiar with and uh, watch people just turn their heads. I was able to get uh, a sizable audience a good sizable audience, not like hundreds of thousands of people, but a good sizable initial audience that was interested in the brand before we even manufactured anything. They were just waiting and I just wasn't happy with it because I, I was tricking people into liking a brand that I wasn't serious about. And so that's the reason why the casual exists. That's the reason why, as a direct result of me stopping that brand, I quit it. I didn't. I didn't quit because of sales. I didn't quit because of anything like that. I quit it because I was not happy with it. And so I just decided, let me go back to Japan, really figure out why I love these designers and study them, intently study these individuals. And uh, one day the content manager of the casual calls me up. He says, yo man, you really should talk about this. Like, you really should talk about all the knowledge you gain because like you're like a wealth of information. And from all that, that's how I was able to get all the work that I have in Japan, because I was studying all these designers all the time. That's why I have the authority to talk about building brands, because I was on the cusp of doing something successful and I've helped successful brands. So there you have it. Answer to your question. Long winded, but I think good enough for you to be like, okay, I got it. So next question comes from Liz. 
Question is, what is the most challenging thing about living in Japan? And what ways is living in Japan different from where you were living previously? So previously from Japan, I was living in Los Angeles. I'm actually from California. Here's the thing though, I'm a military kid, so I've moved so many different places, been in several different countries. And because of that, I, I say that because the culture shock that a lot of people receive when they first come to Japan, usually is a result because they haven't been to that many places. So they come to Japan, it's like a big culture shock. For me, it wasn't a big culture shock because there were two factors. One, I had a command of the Japanese language. So I could speak Japanese when I got to Japan. Like I was like, Nihongo shabere yo. あ、うん、わかりました。うん。あ、そうなんです。あ、本当ですか。え、え。じゃあアメリカ人ですか。はい、アメリカ人です。なんでそんなに日本語喋るのか。え、あの、大学で勉強しました。日清に。Right, so you can't that. You know, I already traveled to so many different different places. So it wasn't really hard for me to be like to kind of wiggle my way into Japanese society. So the horror stories that you hear from other people, I didn't really experience those. Not to minimize those, but I just never really experienced those. I, I could already navigate, which is half the issue anyway. I think. I think the hardest thing was dealing with my job. So it's, it's slim pickings. For, at the time, it was slim pickings for foreigners with certain jobs you can get. So I was working as a teacher because I was like, I need to get to Japan by any means necessary. So I chose the easiest route to be an English teacher. Uh, English instructor, because uh, I was at an Eikaiwa, which is like an English conversation school, and I just just did not like. It. I love the people. I loved who I worked with. I just did not like the job. I I couldn't stand it because it's not what I wanted to do. It was like I had to sacrifice like a year just so I could be in Japan, and that's the reason why I left the first time because I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. And then I came back because I had established a business and I was financially secure. So. There you go. Hardest part, the job and the prospect. And then I just came back with my own business. A lot easier. Annie Tran asks, what are your thoughts on female streetwear? I would love to hear what females are currently right now, uh, into right now in Japan. Congrats on 200K, thank you. Uh, I don't think that you should, I don't think that you should label it as female streetwear. If, if I can give you anything from Japan, Ladies wear what they want to wear. If they're into fashion, they wear what they want to wear. They'll wear what the guys wear. They'll wear stuff that's considered more feminine. They'll wear anything. If they want to wear neighborhood double tabs, they'll wear it the way that the guys wear it. The whole idea of gender identity in Japan is a little bit more loose because you have to think about classic Japanese fashion. Think of something as simple as kimono. Both men and women wear kimono, right? So, and they're very similar, right? So you see yukata, and then you see yuka, a male wear yukata, and you see a woman wear yukata, it's the same figure, it's the same thing, right? And so Japanese men and Japanese women can wear this whole idea of wearing the same, similar type of clothing. There are things that are more feminine and things that are more masculine, but at the end of the day, Women and men for a long time in Japanese society have been wearing similar clothes. So the idea of female streetwear is really just like, huh, <laughs> right? So that's what I can impart upon you about like the whole streetwear with female centric thing. Just do whatever. Females have had the opportunity to put anything together, right? And still look dope, right? You could wear a pair of skinny jeans or a pair of baggy jeans and you could make it dope. So don't even look at it as streetwear. Just think of it as, you know, street inspired fashion and then put your own spin on it. I think like a lot of females are like, yo, we need to have more female streetwear brands, especially in the West. You don't need to have a female streetwear brand. You just need to have a brand that invokes what you want the message to be. This is the reason why I don't invoke the term streetwear that much. I like to say street fashion because that gives you a lot more to work with than just a singular look, right? Because when we think streetwear, we think skate, we think parts of, of punk or grunge and then elements of hip hop are in there now. I don't think that you should even focus on that. Focus on what you want to do. So that's how I feel about it. I don't even I don't even think guys should call their stuff streetwear, but people do. So <laughs> Yeah, that's the secret. Like I'm not really a big fan of the term because it, it limits you into thinking that that's you guys are designers. You're not streetwear designers, you're designers. Or you know, you you style yourself in fashion, not streetwear, but fashion. And you have a look, you have a style, and your style is yours. It's not a genre that 
it should be stuck in one little segment of society. That's just how I feel about it. I, I have a problem with so-called streetwear. It's just, that's how I feel about it. So there you go, Annie, do your thing. All right, so the next question, it's number four, I believe. Do you think Japan is the perfect place to express your individuality in terms of fashion and the perfect place for you to find out who you are and what you want to wear or make? Congratulations, thank you so much. Thunder Thighs, awesome name, uh, by the way. No, I don't believe Japan is the perfect place. I believe wherever you are is the perfect place. The thing about it is I think when you look at Japan, you might look at it from this angle of, man, they can just wear whatever they wanna wear. And that has much more to do with culture than it has to do with uh, being able to express yourself in Japan. That's the little, little secret that nobody likes to talk about. J Japanese tend to look at things like whatever they, they wanna do, they go 90 to 100% in that direction because their aim is to flesh out whatever it is that they, whatever it is that they wanna do, whether that's playing a video game or fashion. Not everybody does it, but it's a cultural aspect of Japan that is very noticeable. In America, it's like consideration for everybody else in everything. Like I have to consider what I wear because it might look weird. People might look at me strange. So we consider that. Japanese don't care if you look at them strange, <laughs> right? And that may be a result because the, the entire country is a homogenous country. Like it's 98% Japanese. So everybody kind of knows like we're all in this together. Whereas like a place like America, it's so mixed up that there's so many, and I still think the diversity of America is a wonderful thing, but it's because it's mixed up, people are always looking over their shoulder like, man, that person's not like me. They may not like what I'm doing right here. People are incredibly judgmental because there's so many different variations of thought. I don't think Japan is the perfect place. Me personally, Japan is my muse. Is it your muse? I'm not sure. Any place could be your muse. Any person could be your muse. Your individuality is about you. It's not about everybody else. And I think that that's the lesson that I can impart upon you. If you feel like Japan is a place where you can express your individuality more freely, I invite you to come. That's not on me. That's like, yo, you, you can come. But I invite you to come just because you might feel that way. Some people feel like it's not. A lot of people who thought they lo would love Japan end up coming here and don't like it so much. Me, I'm not one of those people. I love Japan, I love being here. And the very last question comes from Darren Germano. I'm not sure if I said that right, hopefully I did. If I did, awesome. If I didn't, correct me. <laughs> so how has living in Japan altered your taste outside of fashion? One milli on the way podcast soon, <laughs> right? Maybe, so answer that last question. Maybe, we're not sure. Hopefully, uh, we wanna get guests on here. That's what we wanna do. We wanna get guests on our podcast. I don't just wanna be like at a table sitting down talking to myself, like I am right now. Or am I talking to you or talking to myself? I don't know, I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> anyway, um, you asked in the first part of your question, how has living in Japan altered your taste outside of fashion? This is a good question, man. Um, I would say that Japan has taught me how to be far more objective. Uh, and a lot of people look at that as flaky. Uh, like I can, like, man, why don't you just say your opinion? But honestly, Japan gave me new perspective on everything, like everything. I am able to look at things now with a certain sort of appreciation for what it is. And I know some people do this naturally, but Japan got me to this point. Now I look at things and I, and I immediately ask the question, what is the artist trying to tell me, right? What, what are they, tr what am I getting from this? What am I personally getting from what the artist is doing? It opens up your mind to so many more possibilities on every front. So that's why I'm able to look at things in a more bird's eye view, right? I'm able to ask questions before casting judgment. And this is in everything now, right? Whenever I get into a debate with somebody, I'm always asking the question to find out more, right? To, to understand more because my goal is not to be all knowing. My goal is to understand more because ultimately that's what it's all about. Understanding people, understanding thoughts, understanding direction. And the more that I do that, the more I become a more complete person in my mind. So that's how Japan has changed me. It has, has allowed me to slow down and really uh, think and meditate on those certain things. So, and where I wanna be, right, as a person and reflect on myself. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining this journey with me, with the team at The Casual. I started it alone. 
I ended up creating a team with this. Um, exactly, I used the same skills that I learned while creating a brand uh, and helping people create brands or just, you know, creative strategy that I use with the channel. And this is where we are right now. Uh, some people do it by making people laugh. Some people do by do it by making, you know, crazy videos. We do it this way and I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, I appreciate every single last one of you. Even people who don't even watch this, I appreciate you, seriously. Um, and I can't wait for us to get even bigger and I can't wait for you guys to be a part of that as well. And, and, and best believe you guys are gonna be a part of it, a major part of it. This is just the beginning. So yeah, that's it. I, I don't even have an and uh. Thank you guys so much. As always, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute. Got some special stuff coming up for you guys right after uh, the 200K special. I think you'll like it. See you guys in a minute. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Follow on Instagram for the latest out of Japan and beyond. And if you want even more content and business tips, all you gotta do is become a member right here on YouTube or Patreon at patreon.com slash the casual. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info in international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. Yoshiko, I'm